Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Praise God. Praise God. Something is going to happen tonight. Somebody said the Word of God is working in my spirit. I am persuaded that I cannot fail. Say it again, say I'm persuaded I cannot fail. Because the word of God is inside me. Say as he is, so am I in this world. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The other day I was, the other day I was reading the Bible. And I stumbled on the scripture of how the Lord delivered the Christ from whatever held him because he should not be held. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Are you talking about a situation where you will not fall sick because you should not be sick? Hallelujah. You cannot be poor because you should not be poor. You don't be poor. Hallelujah. I am a success. Tell your neighbor, I am a success. I feel glorious days coming. I said I feel glorious days coming. I feel the atmosphere is right. I told people this is a very defining time for us. Very defining. Very defining. These are redefining days. Hallelujah. I say 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 these are redefining days. Hallelujah. For your business, for your ministry, for your marriage, for your family, for your mind. Somebody raise your hands and worship God. Just raise your hands and worship God. Yes. All right, raise your voice and just let's worship. Oratalabaya, Kosatalabaye, Sharababa Zikatalabaye, Rabatalabaya, Shabababa.
age to age, you remain the same. Tell him God, from age to age, you remain the same. Tell him God, from age to age, you remain the same. Retalama koye re masabayaba. Re masrebo sile bayalala bakoye. Rabosi ba 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 setele ba 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 ra 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 ra. Setere ba 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 ba
Tell him, God, man, you be the Zamuku. My hope is in you, God. My hope is in you, God. My hope is in you, God. My hope, tell him, my hope. My strength. My wisdom is in you, God. It is in you, God. It is in you, God. It is in you, God. Tell him my strength is in you. Tell him my wisdom is in you. My glory is in you. You're the lifter of my head. Ira balosa yamanda kosa talabayera zebaya rara rokosa talaye. Come on, tell him. Robo bo 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 bo. Sira rala mando robo zibayaba. Kararando robo zibayaba. Tell him, God, my hope is in you. Tell him, my hope is in you. Tell him, my hope. Tell him, my hope is in you. in my home is in you. from the life which is of God because of the darkness which is in our hearts the blindness in part in our minds but now the Bible says but that is now how so that is not how so we learn Christ he says if indeed you are in him and have been taught of him now Jesus became personal we no longer sing from from wishful thinking we sing from in the understanding
in the Holy Ghost clap. Come on, clap for Jesus. Come on, clap for Jesus. Feel loaded with power. Hallelujah. I feel loaded. Are you feeling loaded? I feel loaded. That's why it's pain in you right now. That's why it's pain in you right now. If you're sick, I feel somebody's heart is getting healed right now. I feel a heart issue. God is healing you. God is healing you. You're around there. God is healing you. If you've been having a heart issue and you're around there, come. I feel something around there. Your heart has been paining. Come. I feel there's something around there. Come, 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 come. Come. God is healing somebody. God is healing somebody. God is healing somebody. Come. Come, 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 come. Just raise your hands. Tonight, 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 God heals you. God heals you. God heals you. That's why it's painting. Put up your hands too. In the name of Jesus, be delivered. 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 Let me come down and just lay hands. Come on. Not all of you should come. Otherwise, I'll sleep here. That's why it's painting. That's why it's painting. I feel pain is leaving. Go in the name of Jesus. God is healing you. God is healing you. You are my Lord. That healed me. You are my Lord. My healer. That's why it's painting. You sent your word. Sent your word. And he my sins, you are the Lord, you are the Lord, my healer. Tell him, Lord, you are my Lord. That's why it's pain. You are the Lord, then he loves me. Brother in a blue shirt, come. Blue shirt. You sent your word. Oh, oh. I hear sinuses. Be delivered. Be delivered. Oh, you are the Lord. Put up your hand straight. If you feel healed, put up, put up. My God, put up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. My goodness, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Tonight I wanted to share something wonderful. And I don't know how the service is going to end. But whichever way it ends, it will end well. Hallelujah. Psalms 16 verses 5. Psalms chapter 16 verses 5. Psalms chapter 16 verses 5. If you there, you say, Amina. Now the Bible says, The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance, and of my cup thou maintainest my lot. Hallelujah. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup, and he says, Thou maintainest my lot. And what does the next verse say? The next verse says, The lions are fallen, listen, unto me in pleasant places. Yeah, I have a goodly heritage. And the next verse says, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My reigns also instruct me in the night season. Did you hear that? He says he thanks God who has given him counsel. And he, tells, he says that his reigns also instruct him in the night seasons. So when he's asleep, he receives instruction. Are we together? And the next verse says that I have set the Lord always before me. The Bible says I have set the Lord always before me. He says, I have set the Lord always. Somebody say, I have set the Lord always before me. Say it again. Say, I have set the Lord always before me. Yeah. He says, because he is at my right hand and I shall not be moved. And the next verse says, therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Somebody say, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sometimes when I'm alone and I read those things, I shudder a bit and I get slain in my house and I say, Makaria label. What is this? And I'll explain why I mean what I mean. Now, the Bible has said that the psalmist gave us an experience he had with God. Right? He gave us an experience that he had with God. This was a personal experience that he had with God. It was an experience he had with God. Right? And he realized that the lines were falling unto him in pleasant places. He realized that his reins were instructing him in the middle of the night. Because he had set the Lord always before him. Always before him. And that is why he has rest in his soul, in his flesh. Right? So he says, my flesh also shall rest in hope. That is why his flesh is at rest. Because he had a God before him. Are you with me? And the next verse says in verse 10, And he says, for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither shall thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. And he says, and thou will show me the path of life. Now, I want you to underline Psalm 16, verse 11. He says, thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. Now, today I came to talk about a certain degree of being in the presence of God. You know, everybody says, ah, the presence of God, uh, the presence of God is here. Yes, and his presence has degrees of manifestation. But I want to introduce you to a certain place in what I call being in the presence of God. Praise the Lord Jesus. I want to show you something about being in the presence of God. And and by God I pray, if you find this, your life is going to change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're never going to forget this day. It's going to redefine your understanding of the presence of God. Because everybody says, ah, the presence of God is here. Ah, I feel the presence of God. Ah, the presence of God was there. Ah, when the meeting I feel the presence of God. Ah, but what... What is our mind and understanding of what it means to dwell in the presence of Almighty God? What is the presence of God? What does it mean to be in the presence of God? And I'm going to explain that. Let me begin this way. The understanding of God in the Old Testament is different from the understanding of God in the dispensation of the New Testament. I hope you all agree. Why? Because men understood God according to the covenant he made with them. Many of us agree that our God is a God of covenant, but many of us don't appreciate that men understand Him to the degree of the covenant He has with them. Are we together? Because it's 
through his covenant that his full expression comes. It describes his character. It describes the limits. It describes the boundaries by which he functions with man. God is bigger than covenants. Are we together? But he deals with us according to the covenant. And he deals with our spirits according to his purpose in that particular covenant. When you read the Old Testament, as the scriptures tell us every other day, that these things are only a shadow of the things to come. But the substance is of Christ. Do we understand what I mean? In other words, everything that you see in the Old Testament dispensation was only a shadow of the reality Christ. You see? Give me the amplified of that. He says, which are... Such things are only the shadow of things that are to come. And they have only a symbolic value. But the reality, that is the substance, the solid fact of what is foreshadowed, the body of it belongs to Christ. Are we together? So, when you read the Old Testament, it is always casting shadows of the reality of Christ. The men of old, as the early church in the New Testament dispensation, they had the Old Testament with them. But it was not a full revelation because the substance Christ was not yet fully revealed to them. In fact, the Old Testament in its existence did not make as much sense until Christ came. Because he is the unveiling of the dispensation of the New Testament. Right? He is the the New Testament is the unveiling of the person of Christ as he ought to be. In the beginning, you and I know the story of Adam and Eve, how they had a relationship with God in the garden. They enjoyed close relation with God. The Bible is very clear, even his voice used to walk in the garden. You can imagine that kind of experience. The voice of God was walking in the cool of the day. They had a very distinct relationship with God and the glory on them even could not expose their nakedness. Are we together? Now when man fell after that experience, You realize that from that day God made up his mind to relate with men in a veiled experience. From the time when Adam and Eve fell, man started to relate with God in a veiled experience. The life of fellowship became a veiled experience. They dealt with a veiled deity. In other words, every time he wanted to relate with men, he came in different forms. He came in different ways. You remember in Genesis 18, verses 1. Let's open there. Let's read verses 1. He says, And the Lord appeared to... Come on, help me. Uh huh. And to him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And the Bible says, And he, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. Right? These were three men that appeared to who? To Abraham. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord. He didn't say, My Lord. Right? My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. These were three men that appeared, but he, he had the feeling that this was God. So when he comes to address them, he addresses them, he addresses them as his Lord. My Lord, my Lord, do not bypass me. He didn't say, my Lord, so how are you three guys, how are you doing? No. When, when God appears to a man, that man will know that it is God. Because the identity and reality of his person goes beyond any definition to disqualify him. When Paul sees the light... On his way to Damascus, he says, who art thou, my Lord? When God appears to a man, even if that man is not a believer, he will know that it is God. Are you hearing me? Why? Because there was a bright light that shined, and the Bible says, and this light shined at the noon time. In other words, the sun was out, but there was something shining brighter than the sun. You can look in the sun and your eyes don't what? Close. But that day when the light came, it closed the man's eyes. Because it was too bright. Brighter than the sun. Hallelujah. And that is the light God created. When he said, let there be light. Are you following me? Are you following me? So man starts to deal with veil form. I'll show you some in Isaiah. Um, uh, Isaiah chapter um, 8, verses 17. Let's read. What does it say? 
He says, And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look to him. When man and woman fell during that time, he started appearing to them veiled. His face was veiled. They related with a God who was not physically visible, but face to face. But he came through expressions and forms. Like that example when he came, like three men during that time. To Moses he appeared like a burning bush. And they said in the burning bush he saw an angel. You remember when Jacob was in his way? The Bible says he wrestled with a man. That was all God. The Bible speaks of him as the rock from which they drank. He used to take on different forms. But he refused to appear to them physically. Are we together? So yes, he was in relationship with man, but he was veiled. That is why he was waiting. He says, I will wait upon the Lord. The, the, God, the Lord who hideth his face from Jacob. But you see, there's, there's, there's a reason why the, the scriptures say that he hideth himself from Jacob. From the house of Jacob. Because the first man, the Bible says, was of the earth earthy. When the first man received life, the Bible says that he became a living soul, not a living spirit. Are we together? But he found a way of relating himself even to that man. But when the man fell, he even cut off that and started appearing in forms to that man. Are you hearing me? And when the Bible says that he hideth his face from the house of Jacob, when you read Genesis, you realize... That Jacob, the trickster, born as a trickster, later on when he meets God in the transition of his personal life and experience, the Bible says that the Lord changed his name from Jacob and to Israel. So Jacob in its own is a figurative representation of the, the physical form of you. And Israel is a figurative representation of the spiritual form of you. He hideth his face from the house of Jacob. Not from the house of Israel. That is why the scripture says somewhere else and says, And all Israel shall see him. The Israel in you is meant to see God. The Jacob in you, fleshly, he doesn't want to relate because it is a fallen state. When that state fell, he could only appear to men physically. Ah, Nebuchadnezzar says, I, see, I swear, no, don't dig, we three, throw three men in the fire. But lo, I see a fourth man. Who is that? He always appeared, I, appeared either a man, as a man, or he came in form of angels, or he came in form of light, fire, you understand? Uh, whatever it was, he also appeared to Joshua in, in a certain burning way, and he told him, remove your shoes too. In fact, Joshua removed shoes too. Somewhere in the scriptures, if you remember. But you realize that God always came hidden in something. Because he was dealing with Jacob. Are we together? The man who was first in the scriptures, Adam, was not an actively awakened and alive in the spirit. He wasn't. He wasn't active and alive in the spirit. He was a living soul. The Bible calls him a living soul. He became a living soul, not a spirit. And that is why the Bible says in Corinthians that how be that the first was natural and the second was spiritual. That means that the first man was natural. The Corinthian book continues to explain that that natural man is, is carnal. He cannot receive neither design the things of the spirit. But because of his love, he would reveal himself in the veil of form that man understood. Are we together? So, in the scriptures, however, we carried experiences where God appeared to particular individuals face to face. Even in the other form. For example, the first Adamic nature before it fell, he dealt with them face to face. He used to talk with them every day. And the next time we see that in the scriptures was when he opened the relationship with Moses. And you remember the time when Aaron and Miriam quarreled with him for marrying a Cushite woman because it was not legal to marry a Cushite woman. And God calls them out of the tent of meeting and he tells them, Who are you to quarrel with Moses? 
For when I speak to people, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and all you, he says, I speak to you in visions and in dreams. That's also a hidden form. You see? So it's not only in the burning bushes and the angelic visitations and, and coming in the form of fires too. He used to come in dreams too. He used to come in visions too. Visions and dreams are wonderful when God communicates to us. But they are also in a lower form of revelation. There's a higher. There's a higher. He says, and he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision and I will speak unto him in a dream. And all of us are supposed to dream and we are supposed to have visions too. He says, in the last days I shall pour out my spirit and no all flesh. Young men shall prophesy, and old men shall dream, dream dreams and young men shall see visions. It's our portion if you're a new creature. Okay? But it's not the end of it. There is more. He says, let's go back. He says, when, when, if I want to reveal myself to, to a, a prophet, prophet there could mean a teacher, an evangelist, a pastor, a worshiper, a believer, right? Because in the dispensation of the New Testament, we all have that, that grace, okay? Of course, there are people who carry the office and go a bit further, deeper. And he said, here now, he says, my servant is not so, who is faithful in all my house? He says, with him I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. He says, Wherefore then ye were not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? You see God's problem. It's not that they were right to marry a Kusayat woman. No, he was wrong. But didn't they have a problem that this guy was not in their league to be spoken to that way? Or about? That's why I tell people, take heed when you speak about men and women of God. Because you don't know what form they behold in the presence of Almighty God. You don't know the relationship that they share with God. Miriam. Are we together? Now, God has shown you, yes, the visions and dreams are wonderful. But this guy beholds my very similitude. My countenance he sees. That was the guy I see most, most intricately in the scriptures with an Old Testament body. That is why when he died, Satan had to fight for that body. Because that body had seen the Lord in the flesh. The rest of the Elijahs are, you see, fire, wind, and all these kinds of things, but he's not in meat, and then a still small voice, yes. But they don't see the face. Even when you go in the Hebrew explanations of the, the Old Testament dispensation, many times when men say, I saw the Lord, they literally mean they experienced something with him. But we're not talking about his face, because his face is hid from Jacob. In Acts 2, when the Holy Spirit descends, oh, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spake in other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. And cloven tongues of fire were on them, and the scriptures tell us that people outside wondered, because each man was speaking in their language, of each of these. There was something special on that day. And Peter appears to them. And when he stands before them. In the 25th verse. You realize he remembers. What David said in the Psalms. He says this was the guy finally David was talking about. In other words. They used to read the scriptures. But they never understood him. They had the Old Testament with them, but they never understood him. They had the Old Testament, they had notes about him. Even when they had believed on him, they had not understood him fully. Until the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came upon them, when he did immediately, the eyes of Peter opened. You see, the Old Testament was always a dispensation that was also hid, because he was hid to the men he revealed himself to. Because they saw in part... You see? That's why later Paul says that we see in part and prophesy in part. But when the fullness is come, the part shall be done away with. It shall not be done away with on the last day. No. It is done away with because Christ then becomes the part. Oh, hallelujah. But you'll understand later what I'm saying. Now, when, 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 when the moment the Holy Spirit comes, and I want you to see how the Old Testament was like. It was always like they are reading it and they don't understand it. And every time they have a certain touch of the Holy Ghost, it opens up. That is why you see Paul quoting 
And so Isaiah says. And so the prophet David says. And so Moses speak. And so the righteousness of faith speaks on this wise. And then he, he, he quotes Deuteronomy. Right? Because then Deuteronomy, when, when, when Moses wrote Deuteronomy, they did not have a clue that he was speaking about the righteousness of faith. They didn't. But when a man of the Spirit comes on that scripture, it opens and he says, wow. So they were talking about the righteousness by faith. He says, but the righteousness of faith, speak on this wise and say not in thine heart who shall ascend in heaven that he should bring Christ down, da 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 da. But then he's quoting Deuteronomy. That means from Deuteronomy, God was even revealing a righteousness by faith in the center of a man who was known to be legal. Are we together? That is why there are two forms of man in the Old Testament relating with God. There are two forms of man in the Old Testament relating with God. That is why in, uh, was it Exodus something, where he speaks, was it 410 or something, where Moses, God appears to Moses and, 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 and he wants to, 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 to send him. Right? And, 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 and when he wants to send him, this guy tells him, I, am, I don't have, I'm not of good speech. You remember that scripture? He tells him, I'm not of good speech. I, I, I'm going to stammer. I think it was 410 or something like that. He, he, he says, I, 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 I cannot speak, you know. And then he tells him, ah, but Aaron, your brother will what? He will speak to you, etc., etc. But then you realize that later on in the book of Acts, when Stephanus beholds Moses, he doesn't see him as a stammerer. He calls him a man mighty with words. Because much as there was a stutterer, yes, it's for certain. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, right? Neither here too, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech, and I am of a slow tongue. But in the book of Acts, when, 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 when Stephanus is speaking of the same man, he says that I, I beheld Moses, a man who was learned in all wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words. And did. Now, there was a part of Moses that was a stutterer, and there was a part of him that beheld a certain Arab Akoste, and that made him a mighty speaker. Now, there are men we treat Moses up to today, and hear the stuttering, slow speaker, and there's a man who opens Moses, and then he beholds the articulate, mighty minister of the gospel. It's through those eyes that Paul sees the mighty minister versus the guy who is slow to speech. And then he sees the righteousness which is of faith in the gospel of a man who preaches the righteousness which is of the law. I don't know whether I left somebody. Yes, when, 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 when Abraham was told that you're going to have a child, the Bible says he laughed. And doubted God. But there was a part of him in Romans 4 that saw the man that staggered not at the promise. You see, when you're in the New Testament dispensation, you must see the Old Testament from two dispensations. You must see the man which beheld the forms, and you must see the perfect minister that beheld the continents. Because therein is the gospel. The gospel begins when you start to see Moses, a mighty orator, not the stutterer. The Bible begins when you stop seeing uh, Abraham as the laughing fellow, but the guy who staggers not at the promise when he, he hears it he, through unbelief. But the Bible says, but he was strong in faith, bringing glory to God, fully persuaded that the God who promised was also able to do and perform. Now, there are two ministers, both of them are reading the Bible, that there is one seeing the stutterer and picking a message from there. But there is also another one seeing the mighty man with mighty words aligned to the revelation of the New Testament dispensation. Even though the books of Moses seemed legal, Christ was in there. And that is why when he starts to explain the story, he says, and he began to expound to them from Moses, beginning from Moses about himself. When Jesus wanted to explain himself, he found no perfect place to reveal himself except in the, 
in the books of Moses. He says, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto, all, unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. In other words, when you read the, 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 the books of Moses, you might not see Christ. You might see the law and then you say, ah, that is useless. You don't even need to read the, the books of Moses. Only read the letters of the New Testament. But there is a man who can dig through there, cut in there, and then see. The grace message in the law. <laughs> I see. There is a man who finds Abraham shaking and laughing. Ah, it can't be possible. I'm too old. My wife is too old too. And then he sees the man which staggers not at the promise. If you see Abraham through those eyes, everything revealed after makes him your father. So much as the Bible says that he is the father of us all that believe, Sadly, not all of them believe because there is a certain place of revelation that is not given unto them. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can never believe if certain things are not revealed to you. So how then does Stephanus see the mighty speaker versus the man who with his own mouth says, I'm too slow of speech and I'll need Aaron to come in and chip in. It is because there was another part of God Abraham beheld. There was another part of God Moses beheld. And nobody in the Old Testament saw it. But when the men of the new came, they saw Moses and that part. They saw Abraham and that part. And that was the beginning of the New Testament. Jesus himself says, you see, you look at Moses' stories and see the law. But let me show you that everything Moses actually spake was pointing at me. The prophets of old were prophesying things, and Peter said they knew not what they say. And it was revealed unto them that not unto us, them, they spake these things. But the Bible says, but unto us they did minister these things. And it says, on the which things even the angels desired to look into. Jeremiah was prophesying things he did not understand. But when I read Jeremiah now, I understand that he was prophesying Christ. When, when, when Balaam says a root of Jesse, a, 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 a seed of David, you see, the, the, yes, he's speaking. But the Bible says they were, they were asking themselves, what manner, they, the Bible says, let's, let's go from verse 10, I think. Searching of what or what manner, of, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. Who prophesied of the grace? They were prophesying of the grace. They were prophesying of the grace that should come. And to you, and such in what or oh, what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. And it says, And to whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost. Because you need the Holy Ghost. Send down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into present continuous. The apostolic can only interpret prophecy. It can't break it. It cannot be against prophecy. It can only interpret, not break. Do you understand what I'm saying? The prophet can receive something and not get it. I can read it and tell him what he saw and what it means. That's why you see Paul explaining Isaiah. That's how the body of Christ works. As every joint supplies that there might be no what? Schisms. Are we together? Likewise, when the teacher hears me, he can get like seven sermons out of what I've just spoken. Why? Because the teacher too interprets the apostolic. I planted an Apollos water. But today what we are having in the body of Christ, men of the tent can't appreciate the men of the nets. And the men of the nets can't appreciate the men of the tent. And the tent menders, the net menders, sorry, cannot be appreciated by the net guys. He says, Peter, I will make you a fisher of man. He will do this and just throw a bois and bring many. But when he brings them, Paul, the tent maker, needs to perfect the saints for the work of ministry to the edification of the body. Are you hearing me? But today we don't even have the appreciation that sometimes you can have the grace to fish. But not the grace to tempt them. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. You might have the grace to win souls, but you don't have the grace to raise them. Stick on your souls. God will bless you. He will bless you. Because you have a path there too. But today, some men want to be the net, be the tent, 
be the tent maker, be the tent mender, be the net mender, be every mender and everything mender. <laughs> and he says that if every joint die in supply, we will have divisions. The reason why we are divided in the body of Christ is because we can't appreciate each other's gifts. We're competing with each other. That is why God must appear to you very keenly for you to be content. Because you can never compete when you're content in Him. Why? Because your sole purpose is not numbers. Your sole purpose is the quality of those numbers. Your sole purpose is to fulfill what God told you to fulfill and to fulfill it to the very end. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that's what I'm about to do. If I preach the way He called me to preach and I reach to those thousands that I reach to, I will go to my bed happy because I've done exactly what He called me to do. Be content. That is why the Bible speaks of a man, how we bear one another's burden. Right? And that a man should labor to do exactly as he was called to do. And the Bible says, and therein shall he have his praise and his own joy in his own work. But there's a deeper part there. That part is for men which accept every part contributing in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You see Peter winning souls like a problem. 3,000 that day gave their lives to Christ. But you don't hear Paul making such altars. Because this part is the tent. He has a part to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Period. Are we together? Now back to the story. To, 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 to where is, I, I was at. So you realize that even though the Old Testament is as it is, there is something so deep about it. But it depends on which part of God the man beholds. How can I see a mighty speaker in Moses and not understand Christ? You see? They told you guys searched out and it was revealed to them. They didn't understand it. But then when God, when the gospel, when the Holy Ghost came, the Bible says, of which things we now speak. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit. He's the ultimate revealer of the person of Christ and the unveiling of the veiled deity. That Jesus appears to you as He is. That is why if you don't understand the grace message, you can never see the Christ unveiled. You can never... That's why I told people one day, the grace is the experience of beholding Christ unveiled. Beholding God unveiled. That is the grace message. That is why when He was choosing people in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, He says He chose the... The, the, basis, the base things of this world. Let's, let's open there. First Corinthians. Chapter 1. Verses 27. Hey, uh, hurry. He says, God has chosen the foolish things of the world. To what? To what? To confound the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world. To confound the things that are mighty. And what has he done? Uh-huh. He has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. And base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen here yeah, the things which are not to bring out to the things that are. So that what? He says that no flesh should glory in the presence of God. He wants to deal away with Jacob. He, he gets a thief. And then he anoints him. The foolish things of this world, he anoints them. That he might shame the wise. So now do you understand the reconciliation of why the stammering Moses delivers the law? Why the Paul which is not articulate in speech writes the heaviest letter? Why the Abraham which is doubting is the one which staggers not at the promise. Why the weak is made strong. And that's why when Paul saw it, he says, For I now know that when I am weak, then, then I am strong. That's why I tell people, your greatest weakness is your greatest strength. 
That is why when he saw Judas and he had money issues, it made him keep the money. <laughs> why? Because he trusted in Judas. Oh, Apostle, me, I, can't, I, I don't know why I am addicted to this. That thing you are addicted to is actually your greatest strength. I can quarrel. There are people who can quarrel. But those are the people who can keep, who can, oh yeah, who can, ah yeah, 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 ah yeah, yeah. Those are the people who can hold themselves most than the people who don't quarrel. That's why you hear stories of man. I had a guy, nobody ever saw him quarreling. He was a very quiet guy, but one day he snapped. Oh my God. He threw away everything. Why? Because his, what looked like a strength to him was actually weakness. He gets Hosea and he tells him, go among the holes and get thyself a wife. Mama. He didn't say, go in the holes, get a woman and I shall make her a wife. No. God saw Goma selling her body and he still said, no, this is a wife. She goes and then produces children for him. And then the old demon comes back. And then she goes back whoring again. And then God tells this guy, still go back for your chickadee. Why? Because much as she is the prostitute, there's something I see about her. There's something I see about her. There's something about her. And that is the beginning of grace. Great is when God sees what you don't deserve and then he says, "Uh uh-huh, let's begin from there. Do you know how I'm sure that God is going to use you? It is because you don't look it. You don't look it. That's why when Paul was talking about the election, he says, brethren, not on the award standards, not many of you are wise. Not many of you are are good. You are not all deep. Hey, maybe God used you because he knew how foolish you are. And then he tells Hosea, for Goma represents Israel. She goes whoring against other men, but she's the one I still love. Hey? She's the one I still love. She's the one I still love. She's the one I still love. That's how he loved Israel so much, in spite of their weaknesses. Why? Because he saw that that weakness to him was actually strength. God is amazing. One time I read the scripture and I was, I thought about it for more than a week. He said, all Israel shall be saved. I said, what do you mean? All Israel shall be saved. And he says, in part they were rebellious for your sake. Israel's rebellion was for us. They rebelled. You see, read. He says, and so all Israel shall be saved. All of it. And he says, for there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away the ungodliness from their flesh. Why? Let's continue. For this is my covenant unto them. Give me the message. Give me the message. Give me the message. Give me the message. For this is my commitment to my people. Removal of their sins. Next verse. For from your point of view, as you hear and embrace the good news of the message, it looks like the Jews are God's enemies. But look at from the long range perspective of God's overall purpose. They remain God's oldest friends. Some of the people you see who look like they are wild, rebellious, bad. You might find that some guy is funny, but he is God's oldest friend. Why? Because hey, uh, even the blood Israel came to Africa, it's around. Praise God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? So, how ironic it is that they look like they are enemies of God. But his heart is telling them at a particular point, I'll get them in a certain corner and save all of them. Right? Why? Is there another verse? Because he knew that they are, they are, he says, yes, thank you. For God's gifts and callings are under full warranty and they are never cancelled and never resigned. It. Right? He says, there was a time not so long ago when you were on the outs with God, but then the Jews slammed the door on him and things opened up for you. Now that they are on the outs, but with the door held wide open for you, they have a way 
back. And the next verse says, in one way or another, God makes sure that we all experience what it means to be outside. So that he can personally open the door and welcome us back in. Have you ever come on anything quiet like this? Extravagant generosity of God. This deep, deep wisdom. It is way over our heads. We'll never figure it out. See how, see, see, no, no, see, see, see how, how Paul said it. Go back. Give me the, the KJV. The KJV. He says, Oh, the depths of the riches. And he was thinking and thinking and thinking. And the wire started disconnecting. Red disconnected from red and connected to blue. Black connected to yellow. And he says, Oh, the depths of the riches. Both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable. Because he was shocked. They looked like enemies. But they were his oldest friends. And one day, boy, he will save them. Let me tell you, there are people who look so wild. That is why I love preaching grace. Because the other day I was, I was telling somebody, I was looking through the list of the people submitted to us. And I said, what if these guys were not born again? All of these guys would be somewhere in Ichigo. Many of them. Because some of them, I know them personally. Man! Ah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, ah, Apostle Emma, thank you. The day I found Apostle Emma, eh? he, he, there was a time Emma could not even put on a shirt. He used to put on sleeveless. Ah, yeah, yeah. He used to walk like this. He wanted to punch somebody. But now, Apostle Emma, you can find him in a game and he just gets up and he says, He's me. And then he continues, How? This gospel can change. It's only grace that has changed us. It's only, Emma is a little. Some of you, if I look at you, there are people I look at here. And I say, this one would be in prison on a murder case. Because even your level, may you look at you now. You also stand next to your friend on a Thursday night. And you give them a high five and tell them, Chikola. The gospel changes. I say the gospel changes. And be surprised that on Thursday you're seated in a service looking at one kind of black guy speaking. The guy we knew, some of you, the, the, your olden years right now, you'd be in a bar. Hi already. It would be like morning now. But you're in the presence of Almighty God speaking in tongues. Thank God for where you came from. I say thank God for where you came from. The only challenge with religion is it taught us the wrong way to relate with Him. To relate with Him. Because we, were not, we didn't understand grace. We could not relate with God according to His terms. God wants to relate with you according to His terms, not your terms. Let me show you something I never want you to forget. Proverbs 25 verse 6. Proverbs 25 verse 6. Proverbs 25 verse 6. Please say Amen. Now listen to this. I'm going to say something very crazy, but I'm going to qualify it. Give me time. He says, put not forth thyself in the presence of the king, and stand not in the place of the great men. Is God a king? Answer me. Is God a king? He is the king of kings. He says, do not put yourself in the presence. That's why men, if you understand this, you'll have a very wonderful fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Don't ever bring yourself in the presence of God. That's what many of people teach. It's in their songs. As I come into your presence, Pastor gets all praise. <laughs> into your sanctuary, where I'm standing face to face, and I look at those incontinents, and I can only bow down and pray. You awesome. You understand? But you see, sometimes I want to ask the guy, where were you? You're just coming. Where are you? Where are you? You're just coming. Where were you? That's why they used to finish leading worship and they say, welcome back from there. <laughs> That's religion. Praise God. That's religion. That is religion. You see, God does not want to relate with you on your terms. Why? Because if you start the, play, the pattern of 
I go there, then I get, then I go there. You see, now you've become legal. Why? Because now it all goes back to you, you choosing to go there and not going there. And so you start to judge the people who go there less times than you. Right? And so it now goes back to you going there to get. And so it's now entirely you to go or you don't go. If you don't go, you don't get. If you go, you get. And the next verse says, he says, For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up thither. Then thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. Because when you go where you're not invited, right, you might put yourself lower in the presence of of the one. That's why any man who goes to God without understanding the universal invitation, that man goes on a lower slate and relationship. Every time you go in the scriptures, always be conscious. I go because I'm invited, not because I decided to go. And when you look at the scriptures, you realize the ministry of grace is always inviting. Come to the throne. Come to the throne. Of God. Come to the throne of God. You should know that you receive mercy and grace to help him. Come boldly. Come boldly. He went to the guy, the revelator. He was still seeking God. He told him, and I had a man telling me, come up thither. God is always interested in you responding to invitation than taking yourself there. It doesn't mean that you can't pray. Oh, some folks in the army misunderstand me. Say, until he calls me, I'm not going to pray. Until he tells me to pray, I'm not going to pray. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying every time you go in the presence of God, be conscious of an invitation, not your deliberate effort to go, to invite yourself. Every time you invite yourself in the presence of God, you're introduced lower. Every time you are conscious of his invitation, you're introduced on a higher plane. Relate with God on that introduction. That is why... When, when the saints receive the Holy Ghost in Acts 2.25, you remember how Peter now comes? He remembers the story of David and says, ah, the light went off, poor! And immediately the Old Testament was opened before him. He says, ah, David speaks of this concerning him. He says, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand and that I should not be moved. And the next verse says, therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope. And he says, because thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. And he says, that thou hast made known to me the way of life, and thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Now, I want, you to show, I want to show you something. Go back to 28. Underline 28. Underline 28. Now go back to the Psalm 16 where I told you to underline. Do you remember it? We're going to come back to 228. Now, in 11 it says, look, you will show me the path of life. Huh? You will show me the path of life. And he says, in thy presence is the fullness of joy. And at thine right hand there are pleasures forevermore. You will show me future present, future tense. You will show me. He was relating with a God who will show him. When you go in the book of Acts 2, he says, you have made known to me. Ah, I don't know whether I'm speaking to people here. The psalmist. He puts a future experience of knowing God because he was living in the plains of gnosko, progressive knowledge. He learns something new every day. God said no. I don't want you to be in a present continuous life of knowledge. I want you to have the full, complete and perfect knowledge. The moment the Holy Ghost descended on the disciples, sure, knowledge came. When knowledge came, the guy of Acts says, Ah, this is what David was talking about. But when he reached on the path where David says, You will show me. This guy said, No, you are not showing me. You have made known to me the ways of life. You shall make me full of joy with your words. Because this is the generation that sees his face. And that is why now, I'm going to say something very deep here. When you understand knowledge as is for the New Testament dispensation, you realize that it's not the progressive knowing of God. 
It is that illumination that hits your spirit once and all things are made known. That every time you sit in fellowship, you are confirming what is already affirmed. Because the spirit introduces the deliberate order. And it tells him, and for this reason, I chose to understand these things from the very first in the order, O oh dear Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things in which thou hast been instructed. You are sure in your spirit because you have understood the order and the order came by the Holy Ghost. When you receive the Holy Spirit, that's why when it comes to the devil, Paul says we are not ignorant of his devices. We're not even supposed to be talking about him because we know everything. God cannot respond to your spirit until you learn to walk in faith. You must learn to walk in faith. Because faith is the beginning of your eyes seeing, your ears hearing, your spirit responding and everything around you affirming. You must be a faith child because faith is the creative force of the reality of what is seen from the unseen world. From the unseen world. The place of faith is a place that knows. It doesn't pick, it knows. That is why he says that the man which any scribe which is instructed in the kingdom, not being instructed, but fully instructed, he says any scribe which is instructed in that in the kingdom is likened to a what? To a household. A man who carries a household, and out of that household, the Bible says floweth both old and new stuff. That means that you know the oldest of the oldest things in the scriptures, but everything new is also coming out of you. When people listen to you, they feel you're too old, but yet you're too new. Somebody say, that's my portion. (laughs) Say it again, say, that's my portion. In the name of Jesus. So, the ministry of faith therein qualifies us to understand that God does not deal with a man who received the Holy Spirit as a man who is progressively knowing him. He deals with a man who received the Holy Spirit as a man who has known him. And therefore, every experience of fellowship is just a confirmation of what is already affirmed in your spirit to be true. Because the Bible says the word is in thy mouth. That word is in you. The word we speak is inside you. Everything I'm speaking is inside your spirit. That is why you say amen. Why? Because your spirit agrees with what I'm saying through the Holy Ghost. You understand? And that is why when he's beginning to, 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 to teach about the experience of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts, he speaks of how Jesus taught his disciples the words through the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not teach physical carnal words to men. There was a continuation of words coming out of his, his mouth physically, but in the spirit there were things that he was teaching certain men. You understand? Those are the Bible calls them the words of the Holy Spirit. The Bible calls that wisdom, which is not of this world, which is brought to nothing. Because if you teach from the wisdom of this world, it shall be brought to naught or nothing. But if you teach from the wisdom which is of God, he says it is eternal. That's what the Bible calls the wisdom which is above. It is eternal. Everything that comes to your spirit cannot die. And that is why when a man receives this thing, he cannot die. That is why we preach the grace. Because the grace is the only known form by his ministry through the Holy Spirit to unveil Christ. And that is why the Bible says that everything that should be or might be known of him, the Bible says, is now manifest in them. For the Lord has revealed it unto them, even the hidden things, even the Godhead. And now it says that now men are without excuse. Now we don't have an excuse to shine. There was a time we said, ah, tw- you remember those guys who have tra- taxis? Yeah, so many years ago, you've seen those taxis. 
You're always blaming some people. I would have been a success, but my boss speaks evil things. Blasphemy, apostle. I would have been this, but my, my sister said these things. She's the one who came in my way and then stood in my, my ministry. would have been bigger, but this person did in any destroy. Uh, see my, my family would have been good, but then this this woman who my husband got. Listen, when you see God, you don't have an excuse. <laughs> he says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and the Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because everything, everything you know of him, everything that you're supposed to go, go to that scripture before, he says, everything, uh uh-uh, uh, is it before? Is it before? Yeah, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it to them. You see the pattern? He reveals everything to you, and whatever He reveals to you, it starts to manifest out of you. Now, do you re- realize that the word there is not present continuous? God is revealing it to them. No. He says, everything which may be known of God is manifest in them because God has showed it. Showed it. He is not showing it. You're not to the present continuous stage of learning. You are learned. But you must believe it. When you do, the Bible says you'll start speaking like a learned man. You'll start speaking like a learned woman. You'll start speaking like a learned spirit. Why? Because you have received it. It's a place of receiving when you receive from that plane, you realize that we function entirely on invitation, not pushing ourselves there. And for the new creature, the invitation is ever open. But you must carry the consciousness in your spirit that I'm responding to an invitation. He's always ready to say, come and fellowship with me. Come and be with me. I want to be with you. I love you. I missed you yesterday. Can you create some time for me? Can you, you see? But then there are some people who come in the presence of God even when they are scared. Do you understand what I'm saying? I have made you too small in my life. Oh God, forgive me. And I have responded that you were unable. But now, oh God, I see my... You see, they go to God, sorry. But do you know somebody who just wakes up in the morning and you get up? That's why I mean the moment my feet step off my bed. I just open my mouth and I say, Rabba The world is waiting for you. Then I straighten out. And then I go and have a bath. And then I shine the whole day. Because the path, the path story of the just, the Bible says, shines brighter and brighter and to a perfect day. The message Bible says the longer they live, the brighter they shine. The longer they live, the brighter they shine. The longer they live, the brighter they shine. I'm shining today. I'm shining deeper tomorrow. I'm shining deeper next year. God knows it that in 2020, 2030, ay, 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 ay. Tell your neighbor I'm shining. I'm shining brighter today than I was yesterday. And I'm going to shine brighter tomorrow. That is why when you wake up, the Bible says, Arise and shine. Ay, 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 ay. The moment you come out of bed, you just stretch out and say, Ah! That's the beginning of my day. It doesn't matter how you slept for weeping and you are for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. Do you realize that the literal definition of night is ignorance? Because it's darkness. And morning is light because it's knowledge. For God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness has shined in our hearts to give the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. That means when the Bible says weeping endureth for a night, you can only cry when you're ignorant. Because night is darkness. And the Bible says in Ephesians, I think, that the darkness is in part in their minds because they are alienated from the life. So when the life of God comes, the life comes with the light. That means one man's night is your morning. He says, when they say there is a casting down, you shall say. You remember when I was beginning the end, I told you money is going to be scarce. 
many of the things I said, I told you this year people are going to look for money. It's going to be scarce. And then I told you, saints, this is the time to start looking for plots of land, buying houses. Me, I am buying by faith and physical. Why? Because the moment I know the world is losing, I can only expect a gain on my side. Hey! Hey! Do you believe it? Do you believe it? I believe it too. Now, imagine, and I want to finish. You're walking in a dispensation. Now, people used to say, Ah, oh, you remember the famous scripture of they that they know, the, know their Lord shall do mighty exploits. They that know their Lord. And when they are teaching us that scripture, they are insinuating we don't know Him, we have to know Him. Point of correction. If you have the Holy Ghost. <laughs> He has made known unto you. So when they say, ah, they that know their God, some people are waiting to do what? Mighty exploits. For us, we are doing them. We are doing them. Let me tell you, when you learn that, eh? let, me, let me tell you something about knowledge. Eh? Let me show you something. Look at me. Look at me. Did she expect it? Look at that. Did she expect it? Did she expect it? Did she expect it? Did she expect it? Exploits with us are not things we first prepare ourselves. Father, I know. No, it's inside you. The Bible says in him was life. And the light was the light of men. And that light shines in darkness. And darkness comprehended. I don't need to, to first collect myself to demonstrate power. No. Because I live in a plane where it's constantly on. Oh! oh. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Look at that. Look at that. I don't, I don't even need to first. I don't need to first switch it. It's on. It's there. Ever constant, ever constant, ever constant. Why? Because I know Him. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you're not knowing Him. You know Him. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. The moment you receive the Holy Ghost, you now know Him. And they that know their God, they will do mighty exploits. That means every time you wake up in the morning, Receive it. Both of them have received it. Every time you wake up in the morning, you, you're like a reddish. I don't need to first put on the armor. Because I carry it in my spirit. It's on every time. I don't need to first say, now I, 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 I put on power. Because I don't put it off. I don't put it off. Even when I'm sleeping, I don't put it off. That's how we are protected. You don't get protected by putting off power and then you sleep. No. When you're sleeping, power is on. When you're driving, power is on. That is why you'll not die of an accident. That is why you'll not die in a plane crash. That is why you'll not become sick. Why? Because power is always on. It's always on. Receive it. I don't really understand what I'm saying. Man, I am anointed. I know it. I don't pray it. I know it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I know it. Listen to me. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive the fullness of knowledge. So whatever comes out of you, everything that comes out of you, everything that comes out of you, everything that comes out of you, is a fulfillment and an answer. That's why the Bible says, for such men cannot minister questions anymore. 
but godly edification which is after faith. Why? Because the Bible says in Titus, we have set in order the things that are wanting. How did we set in order the things that are wanting? When we embraced the Holy Spirit and what God did perfectly in our lives. There's a reason why Peter says, you have made known unto me, when David says, you will make known. It's because David was living in the Old Testament dispensation where every event was a future expectation. Now you don't, you don't, you don't, your future is not a mist. You live into it. You can create, uncreate, and recreate, forward and rewind, break and build. Why? Because you now know Him. So every time you come in for an error, you're coming to receive confirmations. Of what is affirmed to be true in your spirit. That is why the writer says that of these things that were most surely, most surely, most surely revealed unto you, he said, Those are the very things we minister. You must believe that you're not learning, you must believe that you're learned. Your heart must indict a good matter. And you must speak of the things that you have done touching the king. And your tongue must be a pen of a ready writer. The Bible tells us that your spirit, Isaiah, he was speaking of a place where he, 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 his, his tongue is like the tongue of the land. It's like a tongue of the land. He says that, and, and, and he wakens up his ear to speak even as them with him which is what? Land. Receive it in the name of Jesus. He speaks as him which is land. Tell your neighbor, I'm land. Now I want you to open your mouth and start to spit out some power. Come on! Receive it. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on. Take a minute. Take a minute and fix your life. three times. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm not responsible. Are you ready? One. Two. Three. Power of the Holy Ghost. Pow, 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 pow. Look at that. 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 Receive it. Receive it. be afraid to be in the presence where there is power because his power heals the sick, his power cleanses lepers, his power deals with demons his power uplifts don't ever run away from power embrace it
this is a generation that seeketh him. They know him. Listen, I feel in this room there is a soul, there is a spirit of a man or woman that is about to explode this continent. Holy Ghost, separate them. When a man sees God, they've seen God. Change your family, change your business. This is the point where you fix stuff yourself without anybody's help. Fix your stuff. Fix your life. Fix your job. Fix your marriage. Fix your ministry. Fix your body. Fix your soul. How? You know how. Mission work, long preserved. I'm giving you time for our in this world.
just asking. But you don't know how much is available for you. Let me tell you. I might not convince every man. But the man I'm talking to in this room can agree with me that I feel that something tonight has been passed out of somebody and it's going to have an effect across the whole world. It's not going to be local. It's not going to be local. Mistake that we are live streaming across the world with thousands watching. Universities are tuned now, we have 12 of them. It's not by mistake that God is healing the sick and casting out devils and touching the hearts of men and causing your heart to seek Him. Listen, God has designs on you. Can you clap your hands like you believe? Come on, clap for Jesus. in your spirit I see a very strong intercessory spirit that will save nations you're healed but you're very visible in the spirit you might look like a normal woman but you carry a lot of influence in the other realm and God tells me to tell you he's going to start unveiling you to the world Father, we thank you because of what you're doing in her life. Because of what nations are going to do and receive through her spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. Listen. Listen. If you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, I want you to walk here and say, I want Jesus today. Come here. And then we lead you through a confession prayer. Please don't move out before we finish this. You might stumble a believer from accepting Jesus. Because of two minutes of waiting. Give us only two minutes. We will close. You might expect a person who is supposed to believe to move out. First way to move. Let's first get these guys here. Give God just two minutes of your time. Ask your immediate neighbor, are you born again? If they are not, encourage them. Talk to your immediate neighbor. If they say I'm not, lead them on their hand and bring them here. Come on. I see somebody here. Anybody else? Anybody else? They are coming. Ask your neighbor. If they are not born again, hold them on their hands and tell them, let's go for Jesus. Oh. Do you know how heaven is feeling? When saints are coming. things. Let's lead them in a confession prayer. Then we'll do one more thing and get out of here. You guys repeat this word after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you died and rose again. And I confess with my mouth from today that your Savior 
that your Savior and Lord of my life. And Lord of my life. Amen. These two guys, lead them to, they've just come. Lead them into a confession prayer. You guys, we love you. Now, repeat this as after me. Say, I am shining. Brighter than the sun. I'm walking out. Mighty and strong. In the name of Jesus. I have overcome. In the name of Jesus. I carry an unction. From on high. I know all things. Say I cannot fail. I will never fail. I'm a success. The lines are fallen. And to me. In pleasant places. I set the Lord before me. I behold his very countenance. He's on my right hand. He's inside me. Walking in me. Breathing in me. I have the light. Which is of God. I know all things. I'm without excuse. I must change this world. In the name of Jesus. Give him a mighty hand of praise. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest. Thank you.